Well, good evening, everyone. Meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with uh, Southern Indiana Weather. It is about 10 p.m. on Wednesday evening, and I uh, want to do a video forecast update for you tonight, just sort of look at the long-range pattern uh, through this weekend, and then really some beyond that as well. It looks like we have a very active end to the month of December coming towards us. Now, uh, on my update on Monday, we talked about the potential of was it going to be snow, whether it was it going to be severe weather, and I, I mentioned that it looked like the snow was trending more northward, but we'd have to watch to see if that went back south. It does look like it's not going to be a snow event at all for us. It looks like it's going to be potentially a very heavy rain event and uh, potentially a little bit of uh, stronger storms, uh, maybe even some severe weather mixed in. Now, the Storm Prediction Center uh, has already issued a uh, slight risk of severe weather all the way as far as to, uh, to uh, western Kentucky here towards the Paducah area for uh, Saturday night into early Sunday morning. It looks like if there is going to be any severe weather, this would be sort of an overnight event for us. And uh, we'll talk about what all this means in a minute, but uh, in a nutshell, no snow for us. So keep that in mind uh, and, and keep in mind also that at this point, uh, this far out, they only issue 30% um, risks for uh, severe weather, uh, which is an upper end slight. Um, typically, we see 15% risks would be the lower end slight that we are used to, and 30% again being the upper end slight. So since this would be the 30% risk, it is reasonable to assume a 15% risk uh, would extend out from this a little bit more as well. Could that potentially move into our area? Maybe or maybe not. Let's sort of talk about the data. First off, I want to take you into uh, our map program and I want to show you just sort of uh, what's going on. Um, let me switch over here to, uh, I'm going to show you the water vapor, but let me show you the other side uh, of the area so that we can get an idea of what's going on. This little disturbance that you see right down here is, is pretty much our troublemaker. Um, if I just throw on the surface overlay right now, what you can see is uh, basically a low pressure. It, it doesn't look like much right now. Um, but if, if I just paint it on here, uh, this little low pressure right here is what's going to slide our direction and be our troublemaker for the weekend as far as that's concerned. Let me back this out a little bit and, and just sort of, uh, we'll, we'll take the water vapor off of here. And uh, if I throw that back on, you can just come over to us. You can see fairly dry air in us right now, but that will change. You can see a whole lot of moisture headed our way. Let me just sort of paint a few things on here to get an idea of, uh, for you of where we're at. What we have is a low pressure right over in here. We also have another low centered around in here, another low centered around in here, and change the color here, and you have a cold front that's sort of taking a dive this way. You also have uh, a large area of high pressure, large and in charge down here that's pretty much keeping us under clear skies right now. And uh, then there's actually another low pressure right over in here with a little bit of a disturbance. So sort of taking this in time, this cold front is actually going to slide through us, um, and as it does, um, that cold front will eventually stall out sort of right over the area somewhere. This low pressure that's right in here will then eventually track over this way, and then as it does, it will sort of ride up this cold front, or very near to riding up that cold front, and move over our area, bringing us some very heavy rains for the weekend. The question will be, where exactly does uh, that particular uh, <clears throat> cold front stall out? Uh, to help us determine where the track of the low is. So let's look at a couple of models and then we can go from here and, and, and see uh, and, and just show you visually this. All right, first we'll take a look at the Euro model, which is um, usually the most reliable. And um, I, I mentioned earlier in the week the Euro was having problems sorting out whether it was going to be snow or rain. It's finally latched onto the rain idea. And it's uh, again, it's starting to show its consistency with keeping uh, one key idea, uh, maybe wavering back and forth just a little bit in the track, but that's to be expected this far out. Let's put this into motion for us, and you see that rain start to develop in here. Here we are by um, by Friday afternoon, and by the way, I would say Friday and Saturday and Sunday really look just wet days too at this point, potentially some heavy rains moving in. Uh, but you can see the heavy rain starting to develop to the south here, 7 a.m. on Saturday morning. Here's your low pressure right over in Texas right here. There's another low pressure right here, so we've got a series of, of lows uh, that will uh, eventually move through. 
And as we put this forward in time, I want you to notice how deep this low gets. First off, you see all these colors here. This is intense precipitation. And so this is very, very, very heavy rains that are going to pound the area. And uh, you can see that just all those, those bright colors move right over us. But notice that the low gets stronger as it goes. We start off as a 9.99 low here in Texas. We're up to 9.94 very quickly. Then we're at 9.93, 9.91. Uh, that's, that's an indication of a, of a deepening low. It's a very strong low. That is going to pull in plenty of moisture to work with. And that's also a bad sign for severe weather because strong lows like that can bring uh, more intense thunderstorms with them. Let's take a look at the GFS's uh, rendition of this as well so that we can get an idea. And uh, I just want to show you the GFS usually this far out is crap as far as I'm concerned. Uh, it's just not good um, at handling medium range. But uh, sometimes it has a run that's good and sometimes it has a run that's bad. It's, it's not as reliable as the Euro quite frankly. But I just want to show you that has a similar vein to it. So here we are uh, by Saturday night at 7 p.m. You've got a 997 low over Texas, and you see this these first series of lows start to move through. The main low finally moves through here by Sunday at 7 a.m., and it sort of clears the rain out of here a whole lot faster than the other one does. Uh, not as deep of a low with uh, the GFS, so that would... Um, indicate potentially a little bit less of a risk for severe weather for us. So it's just sort of a toss up as far as it is. Let's take a look at, um, at some of the wind dynamics that will be involved with this system as well to get an idea of why they outlined for the severe weather. And let me just sort of illustrate this for you a little bit. Switch over to red here so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, basically what the Storm Prediction Center did is outline an area very similar to this fashion as a slight risk for severe weather on Sunday. And uh, here's here's pretty much why. We're looking here at the 500 millibar chart. So these are our wind speeds that are about 18,000 feet or so up in the air. And uh, these are ripping. This this 100 spike over here, this is 100 knots. So 100 knots is, oh, 110, 120 miles an hour, something like that. I don't know the exact uh, conversion ratio there. Um, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head and I just can't. Um, but it's it's over 100 miles per hour by a little bit, and uh, this is you know even 80 miles, 80 knots uh, up into our area. These are our strong upper level wind dynamics. But what I want you to notice here is how this. Uh, look at the black lines here, like this. Notice how it curves like this up here, and then notice how these start to curve this way. Um, here's here's what I want you to see about that. See where it see where it curves like this and then it curves specifically right in this direction. We call that divergence. It's winds that are going this way and winds that are going this way. And that is a good indicator of severe weather. Whenever you see divergence like that coming in with a strong low pressure system, that's just fuel for the fire, so to speak. So that is good wind energy. And that is why I believe the SPC has outlined this area in particular for the slight risk of severe weather. You don't see that divergence up on us as, as much because you start to see that the lines go more parallel to each other over for us. That's a good sign for us because what that could potentially mean is that the risk would be a little bit less for us. The other thing is timing on this. It looks like this would be a very, very late evening Saturday into uh, early Sunday morning type of a squall line event if this were to occur for us. I'm not even confident that squall line would make it as organized up into our direction. Now, I think portions down in this area could be looking at a, a very rough day on Saturday, uh, but I'm a little bit more skeptical about severe weather for us. There are some good things going for it on its side. Like I said, we do have that wind energy. We got about an 80 knot low level jet, which is winds about four or 5,000 feet over, uh, over us. And so again, you got plenty of wind energy over us. Temperature wise, we, we definitely have the temperature to support the severe weather. We're talking about a surge of, of uh, even to the mid 60s into us. And, and, and this is by, uh, by Sunday at 1 a.m. So um, goodness, we're, we're really looking at uh, uh, warm, moist air. If we just take a look at the dew points, you see uh, the dew points surging into the 60s as well. So, And if we look at precipitable water, yeah, there, there's plenty of it here. We're, we're talking just massive amounts of moisture being pumped up from the Gulf of Mexico. But as always, 
here's the problem. And if we look at CAPE, convective available potential energy, it's amount of instability in the atmosphere. It, it's very minimal to next to none for us. So uh, this will be a very much an upper level wind driven setup, and um, which is classic for us in the fall. Ironically, though, this will be the first day of winter. And um, as far as my take on it right now, it is a marginal severe threat. Do I think that, so here, 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 I know this is what everybody's going to want to know. Do I think it'll be severe or not? And I get that. Uh, this far out, I think it's a little too early to tell, but all signs point to a major outbreak uh, down in this area. Up in our area, we're very marginable, marginable, marginal right now. So uh, take that with a grain of salt and take that as you will. Um, We'll just have to see how it pans out. I, I don't think it's necessarily going to be as bad for us. And um, all I can say is we'll see. So keep it tuned here for more information. Could it be severe? Yeah, we, we could see a few warnings out of this, but I don't expect it to be a big outbreak at this point. So we'll just see what pans out. Temperatures will be a big story, though. By 1 a.m., you know, on Sunday morning, you can see this surge of, of, of uh, warm, moist air coming up all the way in Indiana. I mean, it has it at 68 in Huntingburg here, 60, uh, 68 here in Evansville as well, even in the mid-60s here in Bloomington. So uh, we've certainly got the temperatures to go with it. And uh, But the big story, obviously, in my opinion, is going to be the rainfall, and that may be, even be the bigger scenario for us than severe weather. Uh, look, this is accumulated rainfall over the three-day event from, well, really from Thursday night and then all Friday, Saturday, and into Sunday. And uh, you can just see anywhere from two to three or four inches with the Euro model. This is actually less in this run than it has been in some previous runs. If you look at the GF FS model, it is very bullish with the, with the uh, wet weather. You're talking four, five, even six inches potentially uh, of rain for some of us. And um, you know, if, if this ends up happening, flash flood watches will need to be issued for sure, especially with all the heavy snowpack that we've had in some of our counties. With that melting off, the streams are already going to be full. We don't need five or six inches of rain. We don't even need two or three inches of rain at this point. Uh, this this, And that may be the biggest setup, as I'm saying. Uh, I, I think that flash flooding could be the greatest concern. Now, switch gears a little bit. Snow-wise, I know that's on everybody's mind. Again, I don't think snow is going to be a concern with this event. I don't see that at all. Uh, in fact, it's trending at more, uh, e even more northward. Uh, the past couple of days it had Chicago just absolutely hammered. Chicago gets maybe a half inch at most with this model run, and the, and the, the big totals even pushed uh, further into northern Illinois. So well away from us and nothing to worry about. Uh, but uh, that doesn't mean it will be that way forever. And so... Uh, we do have a couple of systems that are showing up in the long range GFS model here. And I just want to show them to you. The first one here that I'll show you is for, uh, this is for 1 p.m. on the day after Christmas, the 26th of December. And you see this slight little bit of a disturbance moving down here. And again, the first blue line as you move over here is the rain snow changeover line. So this would be certainly cold enough to produce an all snow setup for us. You see though, it moves out very quick and it's light accumulations. So with this, I wouldn't expect maybe more than an inch or two at most for uh, it's probably just going to be a simple clipper system, and it's hard to get more than three inches out of those clipper systems, probably more like one or two or even less in this type of a setup. But it could be a little troublemaker, so we'll keep an eye on it. And then you notice another system starting to move uh, north of us, but then watch this area as it moves south for us. And then here we are by uh, Monday, the 30th of December, and you see some more snow potentially around for us then. Now, this is speeding it up a little bit. I posted this map earlier today on Facebook. This was the GFS's image uh, from for this uh, just for well, this is the the uh, 18Z model run. This is the model run that came out at one this afternoon in process. This is the overnight one last night from. And um, you can see how much of a difference is. Uh, this takes a much stronger low and, and develops a whole lot more precipitation over us. Whereas in this particular model run, not as much precipitation. So whenever I posted this on Facebook, like I said, always take these with a grain of salt because this will change. What we look for this far out is the pattern, not necessarily the specifics. And frankly, the pattern at this point points to a cold and potentially snowy end to the month of December. If we just take a look at our temperature trend for the rest of the month, you can see that as well. Yeah, we get up into the 50s and 60s by the weekend, but then it bottoms out and uh, you, you can see that uh, 
certainly temperatures are, are well within the range of conducive to a little bit of snow. Go to southernindianaweather.com. You can always get the latest seven-day forecast there. Uh, 54 tomorrow under partly cloudy skies. Chance of rain, but later in the evening, the biggest the biggest rain looks to fall on Friday and Saturday when we both get near 60 degrees. And then Sunday, we reach our high early in the day with falling temperatures. And again, severe weather is possible Saturday night late over into early Sunday morning. So keep it tuned right here, and we will give you the latest as things come up. For Southern Indiana Weather, I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. More updates to come, so stay tuned, folks. Have a great night. Thanks for watching.